Hey, I'm Tommy Calloway. Thanks for coming to the channel. So as my channel has grown, more and more people have contacted me directly asking what's the best camera or microphone or light that I should start with. And my response is usually, what's your budget? It's easy to recommend the newest and latest and greatest things, but they usually cost thousands of dollars. A lot of people that are just getting started can't really afford that. But it's also common knowledge that the cheapest thing you can find will usually suck or fall apart right away. So I reached out to a couple of my friends and we put together some recommendations for sound, camera, and lighting if you had about $750 to spend on improving any one of those areas. I'll handle lighting at the end of this video, but first I'm gonna hand it over to Gerald to talk about cameras. Now when I say $750, I don't just mean the camera body itself because there's also lenses and media and tripods. I want this $750 to cover everything. So Gerald, take it away. All right, Tommy, thanks for having me on. So you want me to pick a camera, lens, tripod and media combo for $750, right? I hate you. So if our budget is completely fixed like that and we're buying new, there's really only one option. It's gotta be the Sony A5100. It comes in at $550 with a lens combo. It's got great autofocus, decent low light, and has plenty of lens upgrade options for the future. There are some limitations to it, but we'll get to those in a second. For the tripod, since we only have $200 left over, I'm not as picky about my recommendation because it's below the threshold for a good investment in my opinion. My attitude has always been to put decent money into your tripod since you'll use it a ton and it'll outlast all your cameras. But my cheapest recommendation for a good investment is the E-Image GH06 with the carbon fiber legs and is obviously disqualified. So instead, I suggest either the EG01A2 or the EK630 from E-Image. Both should be around 170 and are head and sticks combos and should serve you well in the meantime. Get whichever is cheaper. That leaves us with $30 to $40 for SD cards, which is perfect because the SanDisk V30 cards are $20 for 64 gigs and $40 for 128 gigs, so just spend the rest on those. They're all you need for any of the cameras I'd recommend at this price point. Of course, there is an argument to be made for not buying a camera at all and instead just using your phone if you have a recent iPhone, as it'll keep up with or beat most of the sub $500 cameras, and then you can spend that money on a better tripod or more lights or better sound, etc. Things that'll have a more pronounced impact than a slight upgrade to the camera will. Especially with the Sony A5100, which is probably the best bang for the buck with its flip up screen and reliable cell filming, but unfortunately, it doesn't have a microphone jack. So hopefully Curtis's audio recommendations include an affordable recorder because you'll need it. But this is a great option for something like live streaming where you'll have a separate mic source anyway and you just need something with good autofocus and low light with a self-facing screen. In the used market, you might be able to save some money and grab a used Canon SL2 or Sony a6300 for less, but sticking with new stuff, the only other options would be the Canon M50, which is a bit over budget, or the Panasonic G7, which is on some kind of perpetual sale for $500, but that may change over time. The Panasonic G7 beats the Sony a5100 in a couple ways. It has that microphone jack and offers 4K video, where the Sony a5100 does not. It also boasts a fully articulating touchscreen and is a bit more user friendly with less chance of overheating. Both kits come with a similarly ranged zoom lens, but the G7 lacks in the departments that the Sony excels in, such as low light and autofocus. So you really need to decide which aspects are important to the type of shooting you're going to be doing. If you have a bit more money and don't want to make compromises, the Sony A6100 will give you the 4K and mic jack of the Panasonic G7 while retaining and improving upon the autofocus and low light capabilities of the 5100. You'll get the same 16 to 50 millimeter zoom lens, but the price will go up by about $300. It's $300 well spent though, in my opinion. All right, I'm done. Thanks, Gerald. I appreciate that. Every time. And if you can spend a little bit more on your camera, Gerald also just recently did a video on Sony's new ZX1 or XZ1, whatever it is. It's about, it's $800 and it's an excellent point and shoot camera that's kind of an all-in-one package. So check out Gerald's video on that. Now we're gonna hand it off to Curtis Judd to give us some recommendations on audio. Tommy, thanks for letting me come on and talk about sound. First, I wanna talk about some basic principles. Number one, three kind of main things to keep in mind. When you have a microphone closer to the person speaking versus farther away, like on top of the camera, it will generally sound a whole lot better when it's closer. So we wanna generally get that microphone pretty close. Number two, boom microphones almost always sound more natural than lavalier microphones that are attached to somebody's body. And number three, wireless is really neat because it gives you a lot of freedom to move around, but it also introduces some risk, namely that you could have dropouts and that you could pick up interference. So 
it's a trade-off. It's not the ultimate solution in every situation, so it's important to keep that in mind. So let's talk about a couple different scenarios. Number one, if you are vlogging, my preference is to buy a Rode VideoMic NTG or a Deity D3 Pro, put that on top of your camera, and you're good to go. And that can keep you under $250. So that's probably the easiest solution, and it gives you a lot of freedom. And because you're holding the camera relatively close, you're gonna get pretty decent sound. Now, if you're gonna do talking head type video just like this, I would take those exact same microphones, add an extension cable, and then you can boom it out above your talent like this. We've got a video in the description down below that shows you exactly how to set that up so that we don't have to spend all that time here. It's very succinct. For less than $30, you can get that boomed up above you and get amazing sound. So much better than if it was mounted on top of your camera. Now, if we're moving into narrative film where you're telling a story, whether it's a short film or a full feature length film, what I would do at that point is I would probably move to a boom microphone and a separate audio recorder. This is assuming, of course, that you have someone that can operate the boom and can operate the recorder. Now, the advantage here is that you have a single microphone, but you can cue it if you have somebody operating the boom pole between your actors. So you just need one microphone, you get a very natural sound in almost all circumstances, and you'll get a high quality recording. Now, of course, again, this assumes that you have someone that can be dedicated to sound to operate the boom pole and the recorder, and then you sync up the audio in post. That's how you're gonna probably get the best quality sound for your narrative film. Now, if you're working on a documentary film or you're working on a narrative film where you don't have someone that can operate sound for you, then that's when I would probably look at moving to wireless. But you need to understand that, again, you're introducing risk every time you bring in wireless, especially when you're shooting out on location where you haven't necessarily tested your wireless system ahead of time. You could run into interference, but as long as you're monitoring your audio, and you should always monitor your audio while you're recording to make sure you got all the audio okay without any dropouts or interference, then that's when I would probably recommend something like the Deity Connect wireless microphone system. This system has a single receiver that receives audio from two separate channels. You have two separate transmitters, each with its own lavalier microphone. And that way you can mic up two separate actors at the same time and be able to get everything you need. So that's gonna be really good for interviews when you're kind of running and gunning and things of that nature. So it gives you a little bit more freedom. So there are some thoughts on things that you can do for less than $750 to get great sounding audio for your video. Thanks Curtis, appreciate the help. Now it's my turn to talk about lights. So for $750, you can get a lot done. I like to only recommend things that you will get a lot of mileage out of. You know, something that you will continue to use or be able to use in the future even after you acquire more or better stuff or if you decide to never buy anything else at all. I don't wanna recommend something that's gonna fall apart in a couple of years or something that's not gonna be useful and needs to be replaced. I'm, I'm actually using the setup that I'm gonna recommend in this video right now. I would recommend the Falcon Eyes RX18T. It is a panel light, much like the one that I'm using right here. Um, I know several creators that use it and they love it. It's, a, it's pretty much exactly the same as this one. I'm using the Falcon Eyes RX818, so I can do full color stuff with it, but I never use the full color options. I just always have it at white light. So. I would just recommend going with the Falcon Eyes RX18T. It's only $245 instead of $700 for the full color version. And then for the other light back here, a lot of you probably already guessed it. We're going with the Godox SL60. I've actually got another one right here. And if you didn't like the whole outline backlight thing, you can just use it to splash some light on your background. And then, you can take some cardboard or what I like to use is cinefoil. It's just like this black tin foil stuff. Add some texture, make it look like there's cool lines and stuff. And the Godox SL60 is gonna run you about $134, at least the last time I checked. But I, I really prefer the look of having like a nice outline. So if you wanted to get this nice look with, and use a Fresnel and barn doors, you're gonna need the Godox SL60 as well as the barn doors and the Fresnel. The Fresnel 2X with barn doors costs $139. The Godox SL60 is $134, and the Falcon Eyes RX18T costs $245. Now you can mix it up a little bit too, and these are lights that you can move around and change how you want to use them. For example, if you wanted to use the Godox SL60 as a key light, instead of getting the Fresnel attachment, 
um, you maybe you just want to get a cheap parabolic softbox. I know a lot of people do that, especially after that video I did a couple years ago. But that's a really popular option and it just shows you that, you know, maybe after you've upgraded your key light or you wanted to rearrange your studio or something like that, uh, you can still get more use out of the light. That's that's kind of the advantage of having a light that has a Bowens mount is, you know, once you're done using it as a key light or if you didn't want to use it as a key light anymore or you needed something brighter, you can just pick up the Fresnel attachments and barn doors and then stick it behind you and get additional use out of it or use it to light up your background or something else. And finally, you need a way to hold all these things up. I prefer mounting everything to the wall because it saves floor space. So I prefer using the newer wall boom arms. They're like 80 bucks a pop and they can extend like seven feet out from the wall. So they're really useful. If you can't drill into your wall, you can just get cheap light stands and try and get a sandbag. So there you go. The Falconize RX-18 at 245, Godox SL-60 at 134, the Aperture Fresnel 2X with barn doors at $139, plus the two newer wall boom arms at 80 bucks a pop. And finally, uh, one last thing that you should probably get is a cheap 501 reflector. That with a stand is gonna run $41 for a grand total of $719. These things are so useful uh, just to have around. You can use it uh, just to, to block light if you need to, or you can use it as a way to create fill light when you don't have an additional light handy. A lot of people use white desks because it naturally creates a nice fill bounce light for you. So if you have a lot of light coming down, it'll just kind of fill in those shadows. Inside the 501 reflectors, there's also a gold side. There's a silver side for more shiny reflection, a black side for negative fill, and then a nice translucent disc on the inside that you can use to diffuse light. So if the light you were using wasn't soft enough, you can mount that up there and make it softer. Anyways, that, those are my recommendations and thank you again, Gerald and Curtis for helping me out here. And that's it for today. If you've got any other suggestions in the $750 range, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'm sure that anyone else watching this video would really appreciate it. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Stay classy. I'll see you next time.